Shabbat Shalom, YouTube. Uh, welcome. We are in chapter four of Numbers this week. We have more guests. Say hello, guests. Hello. Hello. Uncle Cody. Uncle Brennan. Bear. <clears throat> Bible. Bear, what copy of the Bible do you use? Bear Independent Bible. Well, I will answer that question for you. Uh, we're in Numbers four. I would like to reiterate for all the new people who are here, I'm not your pastor, I'm your brother. So I may at times say things that you don't agree with. That's cool, that's cool. The goal here is hopefully that we can all learn something. I'm not your pastor. And even if I was, men fail us. Men will fail you. And so what I wanna do each week with these readings is encourage you to get your Bible out and you read your Bible and have a create have a relationship with your Creator and do the convictions of your heart and that you figure out for you these things. So if I can assist you in that by the hands of the Most High, wonderful. But I'm not here to tell you what to do or not to do, and I'm not here wielding ultimate authority of truth via my understanding of this word. I don't know of a single person who's capable of that. And so we're highly dependent upon the wisdom and discernment of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to speak truth to us as we read. So with that, we're going to read. This is uh, Numbers 4. And we just left off Numbers 3 last week of um, the Levites now becoming the... Uh, priesthood, the chosen people of Yah, they are set apart to Yahweh, and that they were ransomed um, for the firstborn of the children of Israel. He took the silver 1,365 pieces according to the shekel of the set apart place, and Moshe gave their ransom, gave their ransom silver to Aaron and his sons according to the word of Yahweh as Yahweh had commanded Moshe. And so we had in Exodus the... Um, directive that you will set apart your firstborn unto me. That didn't happen. They hadn't made it there yet. So there were 22,273 firstborns that had not been set apart to Yahweh. And there were 22,000 uh, Levites. And so it was considered a fair trade. And now the Levites come into service for Yah. And so then we pick up in chapter 4. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and Aaron, Aaron saying, Take a census of the sons of Kahath from among the children of Levi by their clans, by their father's house. So these are the, um, the sons of Kahath within the tribe of Levi. From 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old. So between 30 and 50 years old, all who enter the service to do work in the tent of appointment. So this particular group of Levites. Mm, coffee's incredible. <laughs> This is the service of the sons of Kahath in the tent of appointment, the most set apart place. The most set apart matters. At the breaking of camp, Aaron and his sons shall come, and they shall take down the covering veil and the cover and cover the ark of the witness with it, and shall put on it a covering of fine leather and spread over that an all blue wrapper, and shall insert its poles, which are made of acacia wood. <laughs> we went through that in Exodus. Every, the second half of Exodus is make this out of acacia wood and gild this with gold and all the sockets shall be of silver and of the blue goat's hair linen and the non-stop. I think it's a hundred and I think it's a hundred and eighteen verses dedicated to just like the tent. Like it's non-stop, man. So yeah, the poles are of acacia wood. <laughs> Anytime you see poles, it's like Boom, acacia wood. So, <laughs> and on the table of showbread, they shall spread a blue wrapper and shall put on the dishes, ladles, and the bowls, and the jars for pouring, and the showbread on it. And they should, shall spread over them a scarlet wrapper and cover the same with a covering of fine leather and shall insert its poles of acacia wood. And shall take a blue wrapper and cover the lampstand and the light. These guys are setting up and breaking down camp um, with its lamps. And the lampstand is not like a... It's a menorah, is what it is. So that lamp is a menorah. It's not like a, a single candle stand with one candle on it. It's a menorah. 
<laughs> with its lamps and its snuffers and its trays and all its oil vessels by which they serve it. And they shall put all of it, its utensils and a covering of fine leather and put it on a bar. So they'll like hang it from a bar and carry it on a bar as they're walking. <laughs> kind of like you ever see like, uh, like indigenous peoples carrying a pig on a stick. Yeah. That is what comes to mind for me. Um, and over the golden slaughter place, they shall spread a blue wrapper and cover it with a covering of fine leather and shall insert its poles and shall take all the utensils of service, which they serve in the set apart place and shall put them in a blue wrapper, cover them with a covering of fine leather and put them on a bar and shall remove the ashes from the slaughter place and spread a purple wrapper over it and shall put on all of its utensils. This is basically, and this, see, this is why, like, this is not super exciting stuff. But we're going to read it. I've been saying from jump, we're going to read every word of this Bible. What is, what is the blue wrapper? That's basically like a covering. It's like um, a tarp, okay. basically. Um, to remove the ashes from the slaughter place and spread a purple wrapper over it, and she'll put on it all utensils by which they serve, the fire holders, the forks, the shovels, and the basins, and all the utensils of the slaughter place, and she'll spread on it a covering of fine leather and insert its poles. And when so they're basically bundling everything up and packaging up so it can be moved, right? And when Aaron and his sons have finished covering the set apart objects and all the furnishings of the set apart place at the breaking of camp, then the sons of Kehath shall cover shall come to lift them. But let them not touch that which is set apart, lest they die. These matters are the burden of the sons of Kehath in the tent of appointment. So when Aaron and his sons had finished covering up the set apart objects and the furnishings, then these guys come and they will lift them up. They are not to come touch those things and lay their hands on those things. They are just to port them around. Right. So we have these wrappers and things like that. Um, so that there's some delineation there. Because those utensils are used in service to Yahweh. Aaron and his sons are the priests. Aaron has an ordination from the Father that you guys do these things. The rest of these Levites are in service to the uh, tent of appointment. So Aaron and his sons are administering such things as these set apart objects and the furnishings. After they pack them and wrap them, these sons of Kahath, they show up and they're like the moving company. Right? Start sticking the poles in. And boom, let's move out, guys. Okay. And the sons of Kehath shall come to lift them, but let them not touch that which is set apart, lest they die. These matters are the burden of the sons of Kehath in the tent of appointment. And the oversight of Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, is the oil for the light, and the sweet incense, and the daily grain offering and the anointing oil, and the oversight of all the dwelling place and all that is in it, with the set-apart place and its furnishings. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, saying, Do not cut off the tribe of the clans of the Kehathites from among the Levites, but do this to them, and they shall live and not die when they approach the most set-apart objects. Aaron and his sons shall go in and appoint each of them to his service and his burden. They are not, however, to go into watch while the set-apart objects are being covered, lest they die. So, again, we have two foot in a short period of time. Don't touch these things. Don't go in and watch, lest they die. Okay? Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Take a census all of all the sons of Gershon by the father's house, by their clans. Register them from 30 years old and above, even to 50 years, all who enter to perform the service, to do the service of the tent of appointment. This is the service of the clans of the Gershonites, in serving and in bearing burdens. They shall bear the curtains of the dwelling place in the tent of appointment with its coverings, the covering of fine leather that is on it, the covering for the door of the tent of appointment, and the screens of the courtyard, and the covering of the door of the gate, and the courtyard which is around the dwelling place. The slaughter place and their cords, all the equipment for the service that is made for them, so shall they serve. At the mouth of Aaron and his sons is all the service of the sons of the Gershonites, all their burden and all their service, and you shall appoint to them all the duty of their burden. Basically saying, appoint to them all the duty of their burden. Todd, you're going to carry this thing. Bill, you're going to carry this thing. John, you're going to carry this thing. Henceforth and forevermore. When we got to move this Nalgene bottle, Bob, that's your responsibility. You're responsible for the Nalgene bottle. There's 600,000 
603,550 military-aged males amongst this camp, anywhere between 3 and 5 million people. So when we need this Nalgene bottle, Bob's the guy. He's a Gershonite. He's in service to Aaron. He, they work at the, at the behest of Aaron and his sons. And when I say, where's the Nalgene bottle? Bob had better know. Because we don't have time to walk through three to five million people to find the Nalgene bottle. Right? So that's, there is, <clears throat> while it's particularly dry reading, there is importance to this here. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, you can read this Bible from a, a tactical perspective. It, this, this Bible has been studied militarily for a long time. Mm -hmm. And part of that is the way in which you know, captains of tens, captains of hundreds, captains of thousands that's set up um, by uh, Moshe's father-in-law, right? And he's like, bro, you got too many people stealing your time, wrecking your joy. You need people to help. So you need captains of tens, hundreds, and thousands, right? That's, that's a military structure. How do we set camp? Who's in the camp? Who's out of the camp? post centuries here. When we break camp, who does what? Like, there's... It's all laid out right here. And so, in many ways, this is an instruction manual for successful living, right? And so, it's literally right here. For me, what I'm picking out of this is, at some point, somebody needs to know where the blue Nalgene bottle is in and amongst three to five million people. And that's Bob's job. As ordained by the father to Moshe, to Aaron, to the Gershonites, to Bob take this responsibility seriously if this is what you've been gifted if this is your job if this is what you're supposed to steward steward and steward it well right <clears throat> okay so this is the service this is 428 this is the service of the clans of the sons of gershon in the tent of appointment every time i see gershon i don't know why but i think of a gherkin instead of gershon which is a pickle <laughs> And, yeah, sorry, internet. Um, so I'm going to try to not think about pickles. In the tent of appointment, and let their duties be under the hand of Ethamar, son of Aaron, the priest. So, who do they report to? Ethamar. As for the sons of Merari, register them by their clans in their father's house. Register them from 30 years old and above, even to 50 <clears throat> years All Everybody between 30 and 50 all who enter the service to do the work of the tent of appointment. And this is the day, this is the duty of their burden according to the service of the tent of appointment. The boards of the dwelling place and its bars and its columns and its sockets and the columns around the courtyard with their sockets and their pegs and their cords with all the equipment and the service and assigned to each by name the equipment of duty of their burden. To each by name. Brennan, you're carrying the boards. Cody, you're carrying the sockets. Right? Blah, 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 blah. And the boards, see, you all have worked with me in the wood shop, right? These boards were also acacia wood. They were a cubit wide, 18 inches wide, 10 cubits long. So they're foot and a half wide, 15 foot long boards, yay thick. Remember trying to just plain beach? <laughs> <laughs> some of those big beach boards <laughs> these things were massive and each the boards stood up side by side by side like this to make the end of the dwelling place and they had sockets in them they basically were mortise and tenon joinery and those sockets were made of gold and it, they were designed almost like um, hook and loop <laughs> where they would lock in like that and so that's how they join the boards, one to the next to the next, which is all discussed in Exodus. But just the sheer dimensions of it. It's like, it's not, Brennan, you get this board. It's like, you and four of your nearest friends get this board. <laughs> no, <I'm going>. Right? <laughs> like, they're huge, right? Uh, they're massive boards. These are foot and a half wide, 15 feet long, a couple inches thick. Like, yeah. <clears throat> big, big boards. And so it's... Well, and that's the other thing that it talks about in Exodus is that the building of the temple required the skill of skilled workmen, right? And then, like, the clear analogy there is if this is now our temple and if Yeshua is our high priest, which they are, uh, like, that's the way that it is, 
well then the building of this temple here should be well within the care of a skilled craftsman not some you know fly by night seat of the pants health wealth and prosperity gospel bs you know you pray harder to jesus you will get that lexus <laughs> next <laughs> right it's like i don't want i don't want that lexus i want the authority to cure cancer in people with my words by tapping into the father through the son yeah that's what i want right i want to be able to lift people up and speak truth to people and love on people and meet them right where they're at not a benz or a private jet Right, and so as you build this temple, it's important that it's like it's well built and it's well built by skilled craftsmen. Like that really stuck out to me when I was reading that portion of Exodus. What, baby? There's a toddler on the couch over here. Okay. The boards of the dwelling place and its bars and its sockets and the columns around the courtyard and their sockets and their pegs and their cords with all their equipment and their service and assign to each by name the equipment of the duty of their burden. This is the service of the sons of Merari as all their service for the tent of appointment under the hand of Ethamar son of Aaron the priest. So Moshe and Aaron and the leaders of the congregation registered the sons of the Kehathites 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 <laughs> By their clans and by their father's house, from 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old, all who entered the service for work in the tent of appointment. And their registered ones by their clans were 2,750. So there are 2,750 of these guys who were in service to the tent of appointment between 30 and 50 years old. And they were the moving company for the tent of appointment. These were the registered ones of the clans of the Kahathites, all those serving in the tent of appointment whom Moshe and Aaron registered according to the mouth of Yahweh by the hand of Moshe. See, and that's, that's a great turn of phrase too. According <clears throat> to the mouth of Yahweh by the hand of Moshe. And those registered ones of the sons of Gershon by their clans and their father's house from 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old, all who entered the service of the tent of appointment, the registered one by their clans, by their numbers, by their father's house were 2,630. There's a reason this book is called Numbers. There's lots of numbers in this book. Numbers and names. That's another thing where people are like, well, you know, we need to come to the proper dispensation of this particular passage. It's called Numbers. The name of the book <laughs> is Numbers. Genesis literally means in the beginning. Exodus means we're fleeing. It's a story of, of leaving. <laughs> Leviticus is about the Levites. <laughs> like Numbers has numbers in it. <laughs> like It's not that terribly difficult. Um, okay. Gershon, to serve in the tent of appointment, these were the registered ones of the clans of the sons of Gershon, of all whom who serve in the tent of appointment, whom Moshe and Aaron registered according to the mouth of Yahweh. And those are the clans of the sons of Merari, who were registered by their clans and by their father's house from 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old, all who entered the service for work in the tent of appointment, the registered one by their clans were 3,200. These were all the registered ones from the clans of the sons of Merari, whom Moshe and Aaron registered according to the mouth of Yahweh by the hand of Moshe. All the registered ones of the Levites, whom Moshe and Aaron and the leaders of Israel registered by their clans and by their fathers' houses, from 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old, all who came to do the work of service and the work of bearing burden in the tent of appointment, the registered ones were 8,580. According to the mouth of Yahweh, they were registered by the hand of Moshe, each according to his service and according to his burden, they were registered by him as Yahweh commanded Moshe. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep, so I think I'm going to just end numbers this morning with four. We'll just do numbers four, and then next week we'll hop back into, we'll do, um, start back with two chapters a week as well, because they begin to get a little bit more doable. So uh, thank you, Internet, for being here. Appreciate you guys. Um, yeah. I'm a little, we were up late last night shooting uh 
What are those things? Raccoons. 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 They were eating my wife's chickens. It's unacceptable. It has nothing to do with the Bible currently. Um, but anyway, yeah. That is numbers four. The point here being, I think, A, that you have a job, do it well. Like, hey, this is your task, do it. This is assigned to you. Um, and are you registered to that job? Is it assigned to you by somebody who commissioned you to do that work by the Father? Like, I think that matters. Like, are you engaged in service to the temple, per se? I think that matters. And if you are, take it seriously. Do it well to the best of your ability. Um, and then also, there's clear delineation here as well. There's an element of like, stay in your lane. You can move these bundles of tools, but don't touch these tools lest you die. Like, and I, I find that interesting where it's like, not even like, you're not worthy. It's like, this is your job. Mm -hmm. You move them, I use them. <clears throat> and you need somebody to move the tools for the guy who wields the tools. Like, they, it's, there's an interplay there, but there's also an element of stay in your lane, bro. Like, don't do this lest you die. It's like, let's say, you know, you're a professional skydiver. I can hand you your parachute. I don't necessarily want to be the guy using it, right? So, yeah, that's all I got for this morning. Thanks, Internet. Shalom, y'all.